What's up guys, Wally here, welcome back to the channel. All right, the truth is, there's really only one certificate that is within reach when you think of breaking into data science right now. And that is the IBM Data Science Professional Certificate. But first, a question. Is the IBM Data Science Professional Certificate still worth it in 2022. So one of my goals this year is to upskill from a data analyst to a data scientist. And I wanted to do that from a beginner point of view, as someone who has never handled a spreadsheet before or coded before. And throughout my research, the IBM Data Science Professional Certificate consistently came up as the go-to certificate to start. Which leads me to the first reason why I think this certificate is worth it. It is extremely beginner friendly. So I know there are people out there who want to jump straight into becoming a data scientist without necessarily following the path of being a data analyst first. What this means is you have no prior knowledge of data science, no experience with spreadsheets or coding, yet you desire to become a data scientist. If you're one of those people, then what this certificate does is it slowly takes you through the gears of what you need to learn to become a data scientist. The other reason why I think this certificate is worth it is that it chooses Python over other programming languages. According to this Stack Overflow report, Python is the most preferred programming language by industry professionals and that employers prefer Python programmers and are willing to pay them more than any other programming language professionals. The third and the final reason is the fact that it is taught by IBM and gaining the certificate from a brand like IBM will make explanations with hiring manager and HR a lot easier. So looking through the lens of a beginner is what led me to start this certificate and I came out of this course feeling like I got some real value for my money. And honestly, if you're not mentally ready to learn, I will not recommend you take this certificate. So without further ado, let's start with a quick overview of the certificate before jumping into what you will learn in the individual courses. So the IBM Data Science Professional Certificate consists of 10 individual courses with a total estimated completion of 10 months. Each of these courses have their own individual enrollments, completion certificates, their own weekly schedule, graded exams and assignments, lab exercises, and so on. Starting at course one is the what is data science course. And as expected, it introduces what data science is, a day in the life of a data scientist, introduction to big data, difference between deep learning and neural networks, and introduction to regression all kind of easing you into what will eventually become more complicated and complex for that now. Course two, which is the tools for data science, felt like I'd entered into a toy store. You know how you walk into a toy store and there are lots and lots of toys. Clearly, data science happens to have lots of tools and you get to learn a little bit about what each of them do, but the tool that really matters for this certificate is simply Python and its different libraries, GitHub, Jupyter Notebook, and Watson Studio, all of which you'll be given instruction on how to access. For example, if you do not have an IBM account, you'll be guided on how to create one. You'll also be given a free cloud space to host your Jupyter Notebook and connect your Jupyter Notebook to an SQL database using DB API. Course three is a data science methodology and the core feature of course three is to take you through the methodology of solving a problem in data science. This is so important because for every problem you solve as a data scientist, you must apply a certain framework to guide you into solving that problem. Just to give you an idea of what this framework is all about. So you have nine stages consisting of number one, business understanding. What is the problem you're trying to solve? And then you move on to analytical approach. Can you use data to answer this question? There's a diagrammatic view that helps you remember each step of the process and is worthy to note that the process doesn't end at the feedback stage, but it's more of a loop between certain stages. For example, if there were certain feedback, you could go back to the model, redo the model, and then deploy it into production. And then if it doesn't work, you go back and redo the model and then deploy into production. All right, so the next course is Python for data science, AI and development. And this is where learning of the technical aspects really begins. Already you're not familiar with the IBM environment, setting up your Jupyter notebook, initiating an instance. In this course, you'll learn the basics of Python starting with expressions and variables, lists and tuples, dictionaries and sets. To be honest, if you're new to data science and Python, much of this will sound like gibberish and you'll wonder 
why are you learning tuples, dictionaries in the first place? But it kind of all makes sense further down in week four where you start working with data in the lab environment. Now, one thing that helped me and I would recommend is to have a notepad to take notes so that you can simply jot down areas you do not want to forget or areas you want to highlight such that it's easy to refer back to them instead of having to browse through old pages to get them. All right, in course five is the Python project for data science. This happens to be the shortest course in the entire 10 course series. All lab exercises here, you'll be working as a data scientist to extract stock price data for Tesla and GameStop stocks. In course six, which is database and SQL for data science with Python, this is probably where I skip the most because I'm already used to SQL and I understand most of the syntax. Um, the only strange thing here was the fact that I had to connect my Jupyter Notebook to a database using an API. But once connected, everything ran smoothly. And so for those not used to SQL, you should take advantage of the many lab exercises here and practice the code until you really understand what you're doing. Now in Code 7, data analysis with Python, lots of lab exercises and a great deal of time was spent explaining functions in pandas and numpy libraries. Here you will learn how to import data sets, clean data, data frame manipulation, summarizing the data, building machine learning regression models, and building data pipelines. The real takeaway of this course is taking data from its raw, undiluted form and creating a visualization at the end of the day. And I think this is something anyone will truly find satisfying. In course eight, which is data visualization with Python, the main goal here is to teach you how to take data that is at first glance has little meaning and present that data in a way that makes sense to people. And for that, you will use three Python libraries, which will form the basis of everything you will learn in this course. They are matplotlib, seaborn, and folio. In each of these libraries, are specialized charts like area plots, histograms, bar charts, pie charts, box plots, scatter plots, and perhaps some advanced visualizations like waffle charts, word clouds, and chloroflex maps. Perhaps the most important of all is learning how to create a dashboard, and for this you'll use Plotly and Dash libraries. As always, the hands-on labs are there to guide you as you learn these concepts. Now in course nine is the machine learning with Python, and this happens to be the most important course of the entire certificate, and perhaps where you need to pay the most attention. At six weeks of learning, you'll be introduced to machine learning in week one, and then in week two, regression, in week three, classification, and week four, clustering. In week five, you'll learn about recommender systems, and it's two main types, content-based and collaborative filtering. I will talk more about my machine learning experience in a separate video. Now, finally, course 10 is the Applied Data Science Capstone Projects. Here, it wasn't so much of learning anything new. Instead, the focus was on hands-on work to demonstrate what you have learned in the previous courses. So, just to give you an idea of what you'll be working on, you will assume the role of a data scientist working for a startup intending to compete with Elon Musk's SpaceX. Something to note about capstone projects is it's easy to skip them. Having gone through the entire course series, you are tired and you just want to wrap up, but I want to encourage you not to skip, give yourself a deadline to complete it and refer back to your notes and videos when you feel stuck. All right, so back to the question, is the IBM Data Science Professional Certificate still what is in 2022? Absolutely. But don't take my word for it, go check it out yourself. Links to the certificates will be in the description below. I hope this video was helpful to you and you found it useful. If you did, be sure to give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.